Um, the contractor building of the network, um, the engineer from the telecoms ministry, um, GIS is also here, and, and the, the village comes to chair and a, and a team, and also some of the young guys which are leaders in the community. Um, so welcome to this um, very important meeting. Um, we, con we started the construction of this Wi-Fi system a few months ago, and today I must say that I'm proud because we have done some great strides. So today I'm on location in the village of Panville where Didisol is completing running the fiber to the to power the Panville community Wi-Fi network. The apparatus has already been set up by local internet service provider epic communications um so the top of this building the community will finally be able to access internet service in terms of the rationale for the project well as you know the internet service providers were slow in returning to Penville. um Ms. Francis Alexis came to our office one day and we had a long discussion about um, replicating the community Wi-Fi system in Penville to mitigate against the high mobile data costs that they were facing. And that became even more paramount um, after the, the pandemic hit because internet became so much more relevant. So, <coughs> working with the USF coordinator, the engineers at NDRC, the conceptualizer technical design to cover Penville, and the contracts were issued. Epic won the contract. Um, they were the most um, advantageous or profitable or economical solution, and um, they were awarded the bid. Um, Digicel won the contract for the backhaul, so we should have internet services at the village council to the tune of about 75 megabits per second. And that cost to Digicel will be covered by the Universal Service Fund for one year in this first instance. Um, we feel that these community Wi-Fi projects are essential to drive the cost of internet down. Um, they, they, they fall into the, into the ministry's overarching policy of affordability, availability and accessibility and we hope that the project does meet and exceed those expectations. Um, I'm open to any questions and with that I can um, turn over to Mr. Philip Ali who can give you some more information on the coverage and the design which is the design for this particular network is um, uh, there's a there's a first phase that we're working on um, it's to be, de be determined after the first year whether or not uh, there will be other phases I guess based on the the, the needs um, but the first phase includes a main station which is the village council office the backhaul antennas are on top of the building, um, which you'll get an opportunity to see. And from here, we have two remote sites, one in, in Galba and one in Lower Penville. And each of those locations will distribute internet services to the people in the, in, in the area. Um, we also have smaller, smaller radios that we'll be putting in strategic areas to, con to extend the, um, the service so as, as many people as possible. Um, we'll, we'll be able to get the service. Each site is outfitted with um, uh, 
backup power. So in the event that you lose power, um, we will have a few hours of, of internet services until the electricity services are, are restored. Um, we are getting the, as Mr. Nesty mentioned, the back all service, uh, internet service will be brought here and um, we will be able to distribute and everybody will be able to, to log on to a, a hotspot splash page and they'll log in for free and, um, and be able to enjoy the service. Uh, so, what happens is this particular device will pick up the main signal from here and it will rebroadcast the service. Another one will, will be within the same range or you know, further, further east, further north, further south, whatever, and it will also do the same. It will pick up this signal and it will rebroadcast. So, what we were looking for, what we have done, we have, we have canvassed the area and asked, spoken to a few of the bars and residents. Right. To allow us, all this requires is um, a DC adapter plugged in, and once it's in the range of this tower, it will pick up the signal and it will rebroadcast. So um, we will work with the four individuals um, that were selected to continue to to spread because, um, in all honesty, we have recognized the um, additional resources that this might require from person who's hosting it, which is additional power. You know, everybody obviously has to manage their electricity bills. This, I can promise you, is um, the power supply to this is 24 volts. Um, so it's pretty much the power consumption of a laptop. What you have here is a community Wi-Fi network. That's different from a commercial network, right? Epic is a commercial ISP. Right? So that you can provide internet services to your home at a guaranteed speed and a guaranteed throughput. And it meets a certain quality of service standard. What you have here now is an, is an initiative that allows the community to grow their internet and make the internet more accessible to members of the community. So we starting off with 75 megabits per second as a backhaul. We're starting off with 18 radios and three point-to-point -point links. If you add more, you have more capacity. So if you double the backhaul, then each person may get more um, throughput of the internet. But it's going to cost more. Because we have 75, it's 6,000. You can double it to 150. The digital might say, okay, that's move to 12,000. So what you have is a yield of free service paid for by the USF, where the community can analyze and manage the traffic and determine how much more they want to grow this, how much more they want to expand this, how much more beneficial it is to them as a community. Because you can't just um, walk away from the community Wi-Fi, because it's a community Wi-Fi network. Understand? So it's really, so once you start using it, once the community starts managing it, the community can decide what traffic profiles they're comfortable with, whether they're satisfied with the levels that they get in, whether they need to add more backhaul capacity, whether they need to expand more um, access points to allow more people to congregate at a particular location. So it's a very organic design, so you can modify it upgrade it and manage it as you go along. Because the way we see it is as these community networks grow, they will make the internet more accessible and drive the cost to everybody down. And that doesn't prevent you from getting your 100 megabits to your home yourself. It just means that you have to pay for that. That's a, that's a commercial service, right? Where you can get pretty good um, internet access with the community Wi-Fi at a very reasonable um, cost to the, to the villagers and the people within the community. And, and there are other spin-offs that can come out of that, like um, <coughs> coming with a splash page, I think Epic's already put up a splash page, where you can basically advertise your produce, advertise your services, and put your services online, try and move more and more services towards the digital economy. So there's a lot of spin-offs that can come about having your own community network and utilizing it. Um.
they just all is still in the process of setting up a front of the fiber splicing.